Let's tank Hellier in the Trials of Valor on Heroic Difficulty. Now, this fight has three phases. The first being is just learning the basics of the fight, which will be tanking Hellier, how to deal with the breath that she does, and how to kite orbs and kill the adds, as well as dealing with the tentacles. Now, as a tank, we don't have to worry about the tentacles too much, but it's good to know what they're doing so we can sort the front ones. Phase 2 is dealing with two big ads and a load of small ads, as well as DPS and tentacles around the room down. And Phase 3 is kind of a combination of Phase 1 and 2. You've got a breath to deal with, you've got to kite some orbs around, and you've got to deal with one of the big ads and a few of the small ads also come down. So let's look at Phase 1. So straight away, you're going to notice that Biowater Breath will debuff the main tank. So this means you're going to need two tanks for this fight. And you're going to be tank swapping every breath that goes out because the tank who tanks Hellier gets a debuff called Biowater Redox, which will reduce all armor on that player by 100% for 30 seconds. Now, this can actually hit multiple people. It hits anyone who gets hit by the breath. So for positioning, we just had the breath go straight down the middle of the room and everyone else stood to the sides of the boss. Now, one last thing to note is that the breath does hit kind of hard, so you want to use any kind of DI you have available to yourself, any externals, and if you do have it like a prop warrior, say I'd use Spell Reflect for each one, which is 30% damage reduction on magical effects. So any kind of like magic reduction abilities you have just to reduce the damage. This goes especially for the last phase, which we'll go over later on. Now, once the breath goes out, Obviously, if you're tanking the boss, you're going to get a taunt swap off the other tank and you can help kill the adds. I believe there's five on heroic mode. And what we did, we just had the melee kill the front ones and the range kill the back ones. And then they met in the middle and just killed them all before they exploded. You need to make sure they all die before their like cast ends or your raid's going to take a lot of damage. Now, while main tanking Hellier in phase one, you also need to be aware of the debuff that's going out called Taint of the Sea. Now, this does moderate to high frost damage on the person who has it. It affects a few raid members, and it also affects the main tank who currently has Hellier. Now, this needs to be dispelled instantly, as it does do high damage, but when it's, it is dispelled, it's going to leave a little puddle behind, and you can't really stand in this because it's going to knock you back, and if you go too far away from Hellier, she's going to turn around and hit one of the melee and probably kill them. So... When we do this, how we handle it is I just stood to the left of where I wanted to drop breaths. I get the dispel and then move back into position where I would be dropping the breaths. So let's put this into perspective now. So you stand to the left of where you want to drop the breaths. And then once the dispel happens, it leaves a big green puddle. You then go to the position of where you want to drop the breath. And then either wait for a breath to come or wait for another debuff to go out. Now, if you're waiting for another debuff to go out, obviously you're gonna wait for the green puddle to go away and then stand back in that position. Now, there's another way to handle this. I don't really like it, which is you can actually like outrange it by stepping a few steps backwards, but there's a bit of a weird like area to hell you. So I prefer to just drop it to the left and then um, move to the right and obviously be in breath position. But a few people just like to dispel it where they were going to take the breath and take a few steps back now this is a personal preference so it's totally up to you how you do this i just recommend doing it my way okay and finally if you're not tanking hell you, you want to be stood not where the breaths are going obviously you don't want to get debuffed because if both tanks are debuffed it's going to mean one of the tanks is going to take a hell of a lot of damage so just make sure as the off tank you're always out of position of the breaths and never in a vicinity of where the breaths are going to go that way you're never going to get the debuff now as an off tank in phase one you're also going to get targeted every time by orb of corruption which will put an orb on you and you just kite it away from the raid you're going to be getting two of these and then a breath so it goes breath two orbs on the off tank then another breath so how i handled this personally was i just stay totally away your damage doesn't really matter in phase one you're not racing for a dps timer i just stay away and make sure the orbs were nowhere near any DPS so I weren't making them move, which would drop their DPS. I'd kite the orb in the back. And then when the second one come, I'd get full max distance as far away as I possibly could. And then I'd just heroic leap and get back in for the taunt. So I could taunt straight away as soon as the breath goes out. Because as soon as that second orb comes out, the biowater breath cooldown is pretty tight. It's about five seconds. So you need to get there as soon as possible because you don't really want your other tank tanking the boss with the 100% armor debuff. 
So a quick recap of phase one is you want to face Helia down the middle of the room for breaths. You want to drop the debuff that gets dispelled off the main tank just to the left of where the breath is. And then reposition Helia facing down the center of the room each time. The off tank wants to take the orbs away from the raid and nowhere near the off tank. On the second orb you need to get back to Helia as quick as possible and taunt every breath. After every breath, you want to be killing the five adds as quick as possible so they don't get the cast off. And finally, the range in the group should be soaking some tentacle thing in the back that we as tanks don't really care about. All we care about is if it doesn't get soaked, the raid wipes. So that's all you really need to know about that mechanic. So now let's look at phase two. Phase two starts when Hellier hits 65% health. And the first thing you're going to notice is that Helia disappears and she grabs the side with a load of tentacles. There's two tentacles at each top of the stairs, there's two at the front of the room, and there's three tentacles at the back of the room. Now, to push this phase, you need to kill all these tentacles down. So how we did it is, as soon as we go into that phase, we kill the front two, then we go to the back three tentacles, and then we go to the left-hand side and kill them two tentacles. And then we go to the right-hand side and kill them two tentacles. Now, we did send our Destro Lock up the stairs early just to get them going on the tentacles, just to help push that phase a little bit quicker. Now, once you hit phase two, two bolts are going to come from where Hellier was. And they're going to drop one Grime Lord and one Mariner. And you want to position these adds at the back of the room with the three tentacles. Now, the Mariner needs to die before he casts Lantern of Darkness, so he is priority target. And what Lantern of Darkness does is it's going to inflict 42,000 shadow damage every half a second to all enemies for six seconds. This damage increases by 75% each pulse. And then this effect also stacks. So obviously, this guy needs to die 100% before he casts this ability. He also needs to be priority target in the last phase. Now, as a tank, you need to keep an eye on Ghostly Rage, which will increase his attack speed by 30% for six seconds. The other ability he does is Give No Quarter, which isn't anything you really need to worry about too much. But when he casts Ghostly Rage, you just need to make sure that you use a minor defensive. Now, for the Grime Lord, he has a few abilities we need to watch out for. The first being Sludge Nova, which is a big green circle around him, and anyone in this takes 2 million plague damage. The next main tank ability you need to watch out for is Anchor Slam, and this is going to slam the ground with his anchor, inflicting 7 million physical damage, knocking targets struck into the air, and increasing their damage taken by 400% for 6 seconds. So what you need to do is make sure you use a damage reduction ability, say like Demoralizing Shout, just to reduce this damage, as well as some mitigation, and this will make this ability a lot easier to handle, and make sure you don't get one shot. The final ability that the Grime Lord casts is Fetid Rot, and what this is, it's a debuff that he puts on a few random players within 70 yards of himself, and it'll do ticking damage. Now, the trick to this mechanic is that when this is dispelled or it ends on the target, it's going to spread to anyone within five yards. So you need to make sure if you've got this debuff, you stay away from everyone in the raid. This can become a little problematic when you're up the stairs, but just make do. Drop down if you need to, and just make sure when you either get dispelled or it's going to fade off you, you're just not near anyone. Now, the last set of ads in this phase are called Decaying Minion. And what these guys are going to do is they're going to fixate random enemies which will be us so you're gonna have a load of little lads fixating random players in your raid team and you just want to stack them up and aoe them down now other things you're going to do is you're going to cast a skill called decay which is an aura of decay lingers inflicting 227 thousand nature damage to all nearby enemies and the next thing they're going to do is over time it's going to increase its damage done by 10 percent which has a stacking effect so basically you just need to make sure you're stacking them up and aoeing them down and when they die they're going to drop a puddle of bad now these puddles of bad which you'll see are like green puddles and every time hell you cast a tidal wave it just washes the puddles away so it's important just to make sure that none of these puddles are near the tentacles so that the melee can actually DPS because if you have puddles up on the stairway, for example, the wave ain't going to wash them away and it just leads to problems later on in phase three. So now let's look at phase three, the final phase. And as I said before, this phase begins once all the tentacles are dead. Now, on the last tentacle dying, you want to make sure that it's dying in a timely manner. The wave should be coming and if the waves finish, another set of big ads are going to spawn. Now, you don't want that to happen. So just make sure that you're pushing before the third set of big ads are actually going to come down and spawn. 
if they do come down it just makes the last phase a lot more tricky and you lose a lot of dps so now let's look at the actual mechanics of phase three let's talk about the breath to start with now the breath's a bit different than in phase one this time the breath's gonna instead of spawning ads there's gonna be soaks to do so you need to assign people to soak each one of the swirls on the ground i believe there's five um for these soaks you want to be using mobile classes like hunters demon hunters mages are all right at doing it as well with the blink just make sure they're all getting soaked because if one doesn't, the raid takes a shit ton of damage. And if two don't get soaked, it's pretty much a wipe. Now, for us as tanks, you need to be aware that the corrupted breath does do a lot of damage. It does three and a half million shadow damage. So you need to be making sure you use damage reduction abilities. And like in phase one, Tate of the Sea remains the exact same. Now, the main mechanic of the last phase is Orb of Corrosion. Now, this used to affect tanks, but they got rid of that, so it's just going to be on your melee range or healers. So, all they need to do is have two separate stacks, one to the left and one to the right. The range and healers want to be lightly spread, and we had them lightly spread around the stair area. And the, the melee want to have a stack on the right-hand side. And what they want to do is, when one of them gets an orb, they want to be as tight to the wall as possible, apart from, obviously, if they ranged our healers, they just want the loose stack. And they're going to kite this orb up the stairways, and once it's about to fade, they drop back down and then get back into position. And then they're going to hug this, like, green patches on the ground, and they're going to rinse and repeat until Fury of the Maw comes, which will wash away all the green on the ground, and then you just reset positions and start again. Now... If you have them all, when that comes, it's going to be like little waves that are going to be coming. It also comes in phase two, but you don't have to deal with it too much. So I'll talk about it a bit more now. And all that's going to happen is waves come. Now, these waves will push you back. And for each one that hits you, you're going to take a 10% stacking increase damage effect from this, which will end once the waves end. And I think there's about four or five. So they gradually increase in damage. They're not too much to worry about, but it's just something to be aware of. The last thing to know about phase three is we are still going to be getting two types of ads. We're going to be getting two decaying minions, which are just there just to piss some people off. And when they explode, they drop green stuff. So you just want to make sure they get cleaved down in melee if possible. And you want to make sure they die as close to green patches, if not on top of the green patches. But they're not too much of a threat. And the next thing is the Night Watcher Mariner, which you just want all your DPS to swap to and cleave onto the boss. Now, the other tank's going to pick this up and it needs to die again before the Lantern ability comes out or it's pretty much going to wipe you. We just tanked this with the melee group and just cleaved it down. And that's pretty much it for Phase 3 and the Heroic Fight in general. Now, Hellier before the nerfs was a really tough fight, and yeah, it was a struggle, but now with the nerfs, it's kind of easy, which is unfortunate. I think they over-nerfed it a bit, but it's still a pretty cool fight. There's a lot of moving, a lot of things to keep an eye out for. I hope this guide helps you. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos.